What next? Ricky Gervais. Gervais, is that how you say it? Gervais, Gervais? I don't know. I, I'm bad at pronouncing names. I don't know if you saw this, but this was at the, uh, this, uh, uh, the foreign correspondence dinner where they hand out prizes to actors and actresses and everything. And this is the fifth time he has stood up on stage and been the MC of the event. He has made it a habit uh, as being MC to, uh, to insult the audience to insult uh, Hollywood, to insult the actors, um, to insult the institution. And there's a sense in which, yay, this is great. They deserve it. This is the Golden Globes, right? They deserve it. And there's a sense in which, why? <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk about both, right? So let's start with the, with the, with the, with the why. Um, things like the Academy Awards, the Golden Globes, the Emmys, the, the different celebrations. The celebrations, Ricky Gervais is a leftist. How can he be an objectivist? I mean, he's a, he's a complete and utter leftist. Uh, uh, he's a supporter of Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn in England. He, he himself said, after the fact, he said, I agree with all these people. I was just making fun of them. But he agrees with them. Here's the thing. All these award ceremonies are really cool. They are um, celebrations of achievement. They're celebrations that are beautiful. They're celebrations of, you know, of, of people doing amazing things. Oh, sorry I didn't get the joke about the Ricky being an objectivist type. Too literal, I guess. I've been trolled too much, maybe. Um, you know, Ayn Rand commented in, in 1970s when a streaker, you know, somebody naked, ran across the stage of the, of the Oscars to, to, to um, uh, as, a, as a, you know, as, as a way to, uh, you know, as a leftist trying to shame the Oscars or whatever, had some political agenda associated with it. And her, her approach was, that is disgusting. That's so nihilistic. These are, this is a place where people, the beautiful people, dress up beautifully, they're talented, they, they, they're, they're able, you know, whatever you think of their politics. They make movies, they're entertained, they're, they're, you know, this is a wonderful thing. They're out to celebrate achievement. Now, it's sad that the movies they celebrate are such crap, but the idea of these award ceremonies, and then to hire somebody during the awards to make fun of them, of, of, of themselves. It's just undercutting. It's nihilistic. It's, it's cheap. It's... Now, it's true that, but, but, that the, the, the Oscars have become, and all these institutions have become politicized, but they were in the 70s. You know, remember, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, Ugh, I forget his name now. Anyway, actors wouldn't come to accept their awards. So it was there one actor who sent an, 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 an American Indian to accept their award as protest for the way America treated the Native Americans. And th th these are always been platforms for people making stupid uh, political uh, uh, statements and speeches. Marlon, it was Marlon Brando, that's right. But the fact is that this is a celebration, a celebration of achievement. And... The kind of humor that, that um, Gervais applied is just inappropriate for that setting. It cheapens the setting. It cheapens its meaning. Now, it's also true that the political speeches they all make cheapen the setting, cheapen the event. I agree. But that doesn't make you double, mean you should double up on it. So, well, what he said was pretty funny. And while what he said was, for the most part, true, although he also went after Apple and, uh, you know, sweatshops and all of that, because he's a real lefty. It's, it was so, everybody in the audience was embarrassed. They were squirming in their seats, wh whether they deserved it or they didn't. He made, I think, cheap jokes about Epstein, right? They, he's their friend. If he is their friend, that's horrible, and it's not something to laugh at. 
It's something that I, you know, you wouldn't go in a room with friends of Jeffrey Epstein. He made a joke about, yeah, they all flew in their own jet because I guess Jeffrey didn't send his jet to pick them up, right? So there's a whole joke about the, the Je Epstein's jets. It just, I think it cheapens the event. It makes it nihilistic and, and narcissistic. And now I don't watch these events anymore because of the politics, but that's the appropriate response. The appropriate response is for the audience not to watch them because these people make these speeches and they take themselves seriously and they shouldn't be taking themselves seriously. Now, somebody asked, should Gervais compromise his comedy? No, he shouldn't be asked to do the show. It's his style. It's a stylist insult. Now, I've never liked him. I didn't like The Office. I thought, I, I, hate, it. I hate that kind of humor. Um, I hate the kind of humor that just undercuts everything. And, and particularly the, 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 the British and the American, both versions of The Office I hated. And his, he became famous through the, the version of The Office, the British one. I think there's much better British humor. His style is nihilistic, and he shouldn't be invited to host these shows. These shows should be glamorous. The humor should be appropriate for the occasion of glamour. I, I like dark humor when it's appropriate. Like Monty Python has some pretty dark humor. And it can be hysterical. But it needs to be in the right context. You know? So, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not that crazy. I'm not, you know, while the, what he said was true, you guys take yourself so seriously. Nobody really cares about what you think about politics. Who do you think you are? You have no education. You know nothing. All of that is true. The, the American people shouldn't care one iota, one way or the other, what the political views are of people in Hollywood. Nobody should pay them attention. They're, they're nobodies on steroids. They're actors. That's great. I, I have no interest in what actors think about politics, one way or the other. I have no interest in what almost anybody thinks about politics because they're what they are. Now, if there's an actor who's particularly intelligent, who has something intelligent to say, then yes, they're interesting, not because they're an actor, but because they're intelligent. But most of these actors are not particularly intelligent when it comes to beyond the, the, the scope of what they do, which is to act, and some of them are brilliant actors. You know, uh, 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 Robert De Niro is an excellent actor. I'm not interested in what he thinks about politics. Even if, even if you had good politics, I'm not interested. Clint Eastwood is a good actor, not a great actor. And I'm not interested in what he has to say about politics, qua actor. We, we place way too much as a culture, and it's a cultural sickness. We place way too much importance on what celebrities think about anything. Who cares what Madonna thinks? I mean, she's... Sings, you like her music, great, but who cares about what she thinks about politics? Or even worse, the Kardashians. Who cares about the Kardashians, period? I mean, what's the talent of the Kardashians? That they were born with good genes and they look good? There's nothing beyond. There's nothing there. I, I, the obs I mean, one of the things that shows the extent to which our culture is sick, sick, and I need to do a show, one of the next few shows is I still need to do a show on suicide and the drug epidemic and all this stuff because our culture is sick. And, and one of the expressions of that is the obsession with celebrity. The obsession with celebrity. You want to ask a question? There is a super chat, particularly those of you who don't support the show. Use super chat. That's the way I'll ask, answer your question. Um, so I, I think modern culture is <coughs> sad and pathetic, sad and pathetic. Um, and and uh, it, again, it's reflected in the fact that we care so much about what these people think, any of these people, instead of just, in, you know, enjoying what good they produce. And many of them don't even produce anything good. All right, let's see. Um, so, uh, 
Gervais said some funny things, but I think completely inappropriate for the setting. Um, what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.